<laughs> Ninja, please. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Spinner Rack. I'm here with my boys, PD and Cal. And we are talking about still the controversy regarding Dan Slott's um, Marvel TV show. You know, Marvel 616 on Disney Plus and the Marvel method. Yo, it is just continuing, continuing, continuing. What can we say about this? I'm going to pass it on to my boys, Cal and Petey. Petey. Tell us a little bit about well, your thought on this whole thing. You wanted, you, we, you wanted to talk, I mean, the only brief overview is that basically, regretfully, many of the fans watched Marvel 616, Episode 7, called The Marvel Method, which was actually the Dan Slot Method, and they realized that he kind of is, uh, he's holding up the entire production. He used all the lead <laughs> time. He's, so he's a total slacker. It's really a shame to be to work your way up from DC to Marvel to the, the you know not really a big name when he started on the brand new day Spider Man stuff and then become the Spider Man guy doing three Spider Man comic books a month and then next thing you know we're here he's doing Iron Man twenty twenty and he's out of ideas and this is one of the things as a writer. And you're writing different characters, sometimes you don't have any ideas. Maybe you have a springboard. He doesn't do that. He decides to kind of go with the editor. The editor sticks with them. They get a you know a scripter on there who helps develop stuff. And then they lost all their lead time. Six weeks down the toilet because the writer held up. Now the writer, the artist, obviously this you know the art slows down. There's always been struggles of artists being on time. There's, you know, the monthly grind always struggle, but to have the writer be the problem, that's a tough thing. So ultimately, we're going to get into some other things, but um, let's get into, since we did talk, we, me and Cal talked about it, we want to get Mars's thought, because he had some ideas about this. Before we get into the Marvel method and anything like that, what was your thoughts on it? Yeah, it was pretty surprising. Yo, it was very surprising the way things went out. Um, Cal, I mean, before I say, Cal, is there anything you want to jump in with? Pete no, had to say right there. No, you, I'm asking you. you. You, go ahead. You, you. No counterpunching. You. I said, I was very surprised that um, Slot used in developing his uh, comic ideas or lack thereof, you know, and follow through. But I also understand that Slot has been a very successful writer throughout his years and he has been able to successfully and he has a following for many of the comics that he's done and he is a fan favorite and a lot of fans like him and so you know while it may not be perfect it seems to be something that marvel has been to deal with over the course of years because it's been able to bring in revenue for the game with this thing, this business so tom Breedward. <laughs> what methods pie what hold on you're freezing on me Freeze frame, freeze frame, freeze frame, freeze frame. He saw it. Freeze frame. Finish Can you your see last me now? statement that you were saying. Say that again. I said, I said the, the, the name of the game in this in this uh, thing is, uh, is is revenue. Are they able to generate revenue? And that's what they're an income. And that's what they're able to do. And following and people are able to go through with this. Um, so, six one six. I mean, one thing. But I got to say one thing about this whole story is I kind of feel it is buried. You know what I'm trying to say? You have to go to Disney Plus. Then you got to go to the Marvel. And then for Marvel, you got to look, you got to scroll down. I think, what is it? Marvel Live or something like that? I forgot the name of the title. And you hit that. Then you go to Marvel 616. And then you look to episode, what, seven? And then you find the interview. And you're like, wow, those are a lot of hurdles to jump just to get to see this thing. You know, especially that um, fans have really been talking about it. I think it must have come out fairly recently. The fans are talking about it. But it's it, to me, I think that um, it was a bad look on Marvel. I don't think this should have been the person they were looking for to, to, to do. And the person who, who produced this episode, I don't know if he has the same Dan Slot sort of work ethic where he's like, yo, we're, gonna, we're going down to the wire with this, <laughs> you know, as opposed to them having this weeks ago and say, I don't think we should be airing this. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make us look as professional as possible. Um, I mean, the impression you got from some of the writers, from the writers and uh, what, Chris, the Christian Gage or, or Chris Gage? Christos. Uh, Christos. Christos Gage. And um, even the artist is that, you know, like, yo, oh, this is uh, the way he works. And, you know, but you could see the frustration with the printer and you could see the procession with the editors, like, yo, oh, this is down to the wire. All our time is there. You know, but again, it's an ink. So they're, they're willing to give him a slide. Is it good? No. Is it the, the way any type of multi 
billion million dollar company should be? No, you know, this is not exactly, but you know, they're willing to do it. And so we're gonna, you can call it that. Hold on, say and, that again. Uh, say that again, you froze, you froze again. I said, I guess we're gonna, Sorry, we're gonna talk a little not... bit about the model. The only one I see frozen is, you know, You're gone, Mars. Your the video's totally gone. Like you turned it off. Can you, you just check something real quick? Make sure I'm on the right. Can you see me now? Hold on. No. no now I can see you. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is, is that this is all about revenue and income, and that the um, oh the forces that be in Marvel are willing to allow this to continue, not because it's ideal. Because you can clearly see the frustration from the writer, from the other writer, Christos, and um, the artist, as well as the editor, and even the printer, the guy who's handling the printing, because this comes down to the wire. And it is not an ideal situation. And this is something we're going to talk about a little bit later about the, the Marvel method, about DC's method, and which way is better. And even if there's an image method, probably we're going to, we're going to touch on that. But that's basically what I want to say. Any questions about that, gentlemen? Well... I would only respond to something. What do you say, Cal? I didn't hear what you just said, Cal. <laughs> Petey's talking. I'm letting Petey oh, talk. My oh, bad. my I thought, bad. I thought I heard Cal said. My bad. My bad. I would, I would only say you have said what many a um, comic reviewer has said when they struggle with um, Kevin Smith being late on a project and saying, pointing out all the flaws in the process. But this is the top guy. So, like, what can we do? Like he's gonna re generate revenue, so we just have to suffer through it. That's not really a way of a business, and a business mind, that's a big business mind, should work. Well, no, I mean, it often. I mean, these are creatives, and creatives are are not exactly prone to doing what the what what the business normal business would do. You know, I think that's nuts. I think that's out of here. But you know, there are exceptions made for um, uniquely. Um, talented individuals, I and mean, we have that throughout in sports and in, in sports and art and other types of media and stuff like and even in business. You have a talented um, investment banker or a talented um, merger and acquisition specialist, and people or a lawyer or accountant, people are going to overlook certain things, you know, as long as they get the deal done. And that's what we're seeing with Slot. I mean, I, is Slot at the same level as Bendis? You know, we know Bendis is one of the greatest um, comic book um, writers around. You know, I mean, he's held down quite a few books on his own you know i mean he moves he moves stuff but um but slot for for marvel for his following and stuff that's it i mean we the key thing is looking at the numbers and but is it gonna i'll tell you right now the suits and disney watch this and they're gonna be and, and the, the suits and disney watch this then they're gonna call the head of marvel who is kevin feige and they're gonna say yo what the goony goo goo just happened here no and kevin feige is gonna call he's no. gonna call his guys and no. say yo this is not this no. is not the marvel method Disney okay. already saw this. They have to see, they, they, they're producing a show, they would watch the whole show. So that's one of the things why people are speculating that Disney is like, this whole publishing thing is for the birds. And they're playing favorites, like they're in, a, they're, they're in high school and it's like, no, let my friend in, let my friend do it, like that sort of thing. They're not, they, at no point in the process did they show us what Dan Slott's plot was? That's true. And he gave us a couple ideas. The artist started working on something. They, hey, those ideas were hammered out by him and the editor. We didn't see a plot come through, say this, that, and the other. So, and obviously Slot can't say anything to his defense. He has to have everybody else go around. But I mean, I thought to be like a you know, soft gesture to be a, here's my plot, here's my six page plot, that sort of thing. Cause that's what, I mean, we, I mean, we want to get into Marvel plots, but at the same time, um, it was the story conferences was Stan. I mean, there's one in print that's simple, but it's like, that's more of a, like a, it was more like a springboard. This is even less than that. So Stan is one person and that, at the point, Marvel moved from what Stan was doing to either two to six page plots that would be given to the editors to read, approve, 
and send to the artists. On the other side, some of the artists that were more collaborative, like Byrne and Claremont, they would talk about that stuff on the phone. And then the writer would send in the stuff to the editor saying, this is what we're going to do. And Byrne would do what they talk about on the phone. And then they would get it back in there. The editor would keep things in line and make sure that it wasn't too, too far off. Anything that was added was fine. But this is not that. This is a whole new method of laziness. And that's the hard part of it. We, 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 I don't want to say we look at the, uh, the artist. Um, we look at the, um, the writer. And we look at the editor. So what the editor, I think, was Shannon um, Balestros and the artist Pete Woods. And, no problem. And, and, and the Christos Gage. And one of the things that you get is that there's frustration all along. You know? I don't think they know this is not the normal method. It's, this is Dan Slot's method. Let's call it what it is, Dan Slot method. I don't think that the rest of Marvel is, is going through. Because they're, they're this, um, <laughs> there's a word like I want to use. I, I didn't want to use that. But if it's, if it's this uh, slip shot or whatever, it is not cool. There's no way they're going to be able to. Uh, uh, but Marvel produces so many comics on a regular basis. You know, I can't imagine this is this is um, is typical of Marvel. So that's why I'm saying I don't know why this particular episode came out. I don't know how it slipped through. You know, Marvel was in need for content, and I believe that's probably one of the reasons this was pushed out. This is like, yo, this is what we have. And they're like, ah, oh, we gotta get something on Disney Plus. Put it out. We'll, we'll work with it. Nobody's going to see it, especially since it's so buried. You got to go to two or three different no, layers. No, it wasn't different. buried. Everyone was, at some point, I was going to watch that show. The only problem is the internet watched it first. If they got Disney Plus, they got to figure out stuff to watch. It's just like Netflix. And they went through it and they watched the cosplayers. They got the episode seven. They're like, what is, and that's the thing. With comic fans, it's like, zzzz, right? No, but, I'm, but, but right. But I'm saying, uh, in, uh, in, when you go into the Disney Plus thing where, you know, at the very top they have a banner of the newest things that they're, they're pushing and stuff like that. It's not that. This it is, is that no now. advertising for them. Oh, that's what you want to say? Let's do this. Let's do this. We can do Let's do this, bro. Da, 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 da. I know, um, this is yeah, what you want to do? Cal agrees with what I'm saying. So Cal and I agree with, 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 with what I'm saying because you know, it's it? clearly not something that's just... Uh, Here we go. I'm going back one. Going there? No, no, oh no, don't put me in it. I don't agree with any of this. Here we go. Look at here, the oh. originals. It's one of the originals right in the middle. Bullseye. No, no, go, go, no, no, go, go up. Go up. Go, I go, am go, up. Go. How much further do I need no, to no, go no, with the no, originals? No, no, no. When it, no, not Marvel. Just go to Disney Plus itself. Not originals. Put in the originals. No, not the originals. Go to Disney Plus itself. It's right the bullseye. Right. Can we look at the bullseye? Home, home. No, look at home. Hit home. Click on home there it doesn't show up there now look at all the different things that come up in the banners these are the things that they're trying to push just like on netflix they have their, their main thing they're not showing this they're not showing marvel 616 you know what i'm trying to say no. they're burying <laughs> it okay that's a uh, mandalorian they're burying it they're showing something called folklore with um um the singer you know they got mickey mouse wonderful year they got a Santa Claus collection, but there's no I'm six on six. That's the point I'm trying to make but that's what I'm, you. I'm but, saying you made your point. You made this is the point you want to make. Okay, you're saying that it's not in the first list of stuff. No, what I was, even, was scroll, no scroll down. I was like, I'm, I looked past all of this, and what I did was the bullseye, Marvel. That's what I went for, right? Okay, so and then where, I said, where is it? Over here. I was like, I want to see what the originals are. What's well, look going at how on? Far down, look at how far down it is. I, and look, look how, no, I wanted to see the originals. That's what I found. Right, Before but look at how far down it is. And it then is I watched the trailer. And I said, oh, well, I'm Mars, Mars, what's your point? What's your point? People still found it. Doesn't matter how far down it is. They found it. <laughs> I thought, yo, I thought, I thought silence meant that you agree with me, bro. No. No, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm giving you enough rope to hang yourself. And at this point, you, you're like, you know, come on. You're already on the gallows now on your tippy toes. You know, enough. <laughs> well, I'm surviving, goddammit. Yeah. Tippy toes or not. You know, us six foot three dudes, it doesn't, we're, it's not going to happen, man. All right, yo, oh. so let's get on, let's get on to the Marvel method versus the DC method. And if there's even an image method we're talking about. So no the Marvel the DC method, there's like the Marvel, there's like the Marvel, the Marvel way of doing comics. And then everybody else did, did it the other way. Everybody else uses a full script. Nobody else was doing that stuff except for Marvel. And the only reason why they did that was because of Stan Lee 
and his interactions with guys like Kirby and, you know, and Ditko, and who could actually hold up their end of the bargain. Larry Hama was on that video, and he said that right. he could barely get through a page. And he's like, what's wrong with this? He's like, I'm responsible. <laughs> most of the writers yes, are like, where's the, most of the writers are like, what's this? What do you mean a plug? The, 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 the meets that we would go into are, is that Stan would come to Jack one day and say, you know what? I want a story where the Fantastic Four fights God and leave him alone. And Jack Kirby would come back with uh, Fantastic Four meeting Galactus, Galactus and the Silver Surfer and all that other type of stuff. That's if you can believe that exactly. But you still had two cats like Stan Lee mm -hmm. and Jack Kirby because you could give Kirby uh, almost like an Alexander Dumas type thing where if you gave Kirby the spark, Kirby could still come. Kirby came back with all of that art based on what he felt the plot should have done. Okay, but then you still had to have Stan Lee come back and do all of that dialogue. All of those classic phrases, everything that you remember in those stories, he was coming back. So even if he was the person, who, even if he wasn't the person who was constructing the story in terms of art, he was still coming back and putting in all the dialogue, the stuff that was making that story flow, which is not an easy thing to do. So you had the Marvel method and everybody else, and even then, Calling it the Marvel method, that was pretty much the Stan Lee, whoever could rock with Stan Lee method. And that's, I'm glad you said that. That's the point. That, that was the point I was going to get to. That's exactly. This is really more a Stan Lee thing because it was not something that's very easily transferable. And like you said, it had to be oh. talented artists who, could, who can get that. But is that the way you really want to do something where, um, I, mean, I think they pointed out where they had... Um, if you're Stan um, Lee, yes. You're like, where you, no, exactly. But then when you have, you know, you tell, hey... Uh, Tell was going to do the uh, the story about a godlike figure in the uh, Fantastic Four universe, and all of a sudden comes back with Galactus. And said, okay, that seems cool. And then there's in the corner there's there's um, um who is this? Why are you putting something in? No, that's not what he said. If you had a full script, if you had a full script, then you know different thing right stop, there. Stop, stop. The thing of it is, the, the oh, all right. This is the pro the process. We're going back to that and saying. That was a happy, Stan was saying as a happy accident, saying that where did this guy come from? And it's like, and Kirby wrote in there the surfer, and Stan added in the silver surfer, right? But it's like, there was something that he looked at and said, let's, let's make this guy more part of the story, like have him do something in there. And that, you know, and then they, they worked him into the story. Now, Stan at the same time said, obviously, there's been times where he said one word and this, that, and the other to Kirby. But he says on that one, because <laughs> people have asked him, did you say fight God? Like, no, I didn't just say fight God. But ultimately, <laughs> you got to look past the stand period and look the, to the 70s, 80s, and 90s, where Marvel were basically plot, right? And Stan, as far as art director, had a style he wanted. And in the sense of giving these guys a plot, could take scenes which were boring scenes, like you look in the how to do comics in Marvel way, and they would turn the angles, making things a little more dramatic, especially like you go into like Daily Bugle, stuff like that, having people respond, you know, like they said, um, they don't go to the door, they go to the door. Like that's sort of the Marvel, the Marvel way was adding this panache to it and adding the energy and then allowing the artists. So some artists took it a different way. You see, you see Neil Adams, but then you also see Rick Buckler, Billy, Billy Graham. These guys would really take the storytelling and do these sort of, um, take what Kirby did and went even further doing different sort of murals and double stage prints. And, um, but all was predicated on the fact that you had Stan Lee doing it. Going on, you were not being, even, even the editor for Dan Slott said, now things are not quite as loose as it was back then. Am I right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. He There's can't, no you know, so you have to provide, you, you it's, have it's to, not, you it's have not to, because the comic industry, the, the, what's the name? Because the writers were doing most of the, the when you know, look, what was it? Um, when the, who's that guy? Quesada came in, Marvel picked up most of the Vertigo guys. They picked up a lot, Axel Alonso picked up a lot of the Vertigo guys, and most of those guys are full script guys. They were writing full scripts. You know, ultimately in the plan that these scripts could also be turned into movies, but they say, hey, I'll turn it into a comic book and do something for Vertigo, and they got fame that way. So then, I mean, and a lot of artists, like even like Frank Miller and Jim Starlin, they work full script method, like that sort of thing. But at the same time, 
the fact that all these writers it became sort of a writer's world, not because of the editorial, the writers themselves were writing scripts. So if you look at DC already having the Vertigo guys, then the Vertigo guys going to Marvel, and that that sort of spread throughout where the editors are like, it'd be easy to just give me a script. Because we don't, we don't, there's so much turnover and a lot of the big storytellers that could, you know, do, use maybe a couple sentences and give you 22 pages weren't really doing it anymore, you know, so yeah, most of them sort of that. So yeah, I think we look but, but at that full theory. script, but, but we look at it and we say what the full script method is the better method, right? No, we don't it say gets, that. It's, How, we have Marvel books and you have DC books and Marvel books overtook you had the greatest illustrators in, in, in EC Comics, and you had incredible illustrators in DC Comics. And then Marvel overtook those things, being a plot art script method from the 70s, 80s, and even though you go to the new Teen Titans, that was done Marvel style between Marv and, um, and, um, and George, George Perez. They basically talked it over at, during lunch, the plot, and then George would draw it. So it's like, it's a, it's a very fruitful method. And that's where the Marvel method is extended past Stan in the 70s by Roy, all those people, by which Shooter, Shooter worked. And he was a script guy. He worked with DC. He had to write scripts for DC. But he went to Marvel and, you know, he approved plots. He didn't turn it into a full script place. And um, so you can't look at, you can't look at, 70s, 80s, and then keep the 90s in there because it did have storytellers that some weren't that great, but they were plot, meant plot too, but they had the biz biggest success. So we can't just say, well, this one's better. As far as um, the writer, you know, like, if the writer's visual enough, like I think I know who was it, um, the only one that, I mean, I guess you could read out more scripts and see how detailed they are. You have um, Mike W. Barr, who, they, who I think Alan Davis said, his script, his panel descriptions, you don't need, the artist wouldn't need to change because he's a visual, very visual writer. So, but it's not everyone thinks that way. So we had Jay, was it, was it the Truszynski writing scripts for um, um, John Romita Jr. They would go to John Romita Jr. saying, kind of think of this as a super plot. Yes, there's all that and the script's on there, but change whatever you need to do because you know, you know, you know what you're doing, that sort of thing. So they still with the stronger storytellers, they're kind of saying, you know, change what you need to to make make sense of it, that sort of thing. So, so it's not a thing where it's just bad because you can look at the Marvel books and then the fact that there's Marvel zombies comparison to this in the 70s where the in the 80s where they're like saying. Batman is selling to the roof and there are people coming in buying Batman comic books and they're coming out buying more Marvel stuff at the same time. And, it's, and the people in Marvel sales were like, this is wow. Like they're still buying more of our stuff than DC, but they're buying some Batman stuff. So, and you can see that sort of thing. That's so, um, a lot of Batman stuff. I just want to make that, that one small No, I'm talking about an eight Batman, there was a Batman 89 where they would get the cult, all that, the, the death in the family, all that stuff that was coming out with Batman. Which was done the full script way, the script, the full script method. Mm, I don't know. Then I'd have to look into it because Danny O'Neill came from Marvel. He might he had so many people fly by. I think that when was... Stalin worked his way back in the scripts, but early on wait, he, wait. The cult I hear a voice I hear a voice in the background. I hear that a voice was in the full background. Script. That was full script. That, that was full script. I know only because and you're talking about the whole death in the family period? That was full yeah. script because they had that whole thing with, look, are we going to kill Robin or are we not going to kill Robin? So they had to have that, that, that had to be, uh, mm -hmm. that had to be tightened up, had to be tightened up so they could execute that whatever we, along those lines. Anything that came after, I don't really know about, but that section right there, yeah. Was he, well, I only say that because Starlin was talking about the cult and he'd given Bernie Wrights in the plot. And obviously the, the cult is a beautiful book. But um, um, Bernie Rice is kind of iffy on on the on the on the plot, but he did it. So then when he did the Punisher instead of Batman, um, and, and what's his name, Jim Jim Saul said he had moved to um, moved to um, scripts, but he th thought with with um, Bernie he was kind of like 
hey, let's see, you know, I don't want to tell Bernie what to do. And he was like, no, I'd be more comfortable with a script. So some artists are. Some artists went to Marvel and they were like, they kind of, I think Alex Toth, he was like not really, he didn't like the changes that Stan was doing. I think they totally changed his look for um, the juggernaut. Like you can see it in the original pencils where he was kind of, um, I think he might have, it was, real, it was a little wacky design and then you see the curvy design, which is a little more streamlined. So, you know, it doesn't work for many uh, all artists, but it's interesting. So I don't want, I just don't, I stress why I'm saying, talking along about this. I don't want to go into, well, obviously it went out because now everyone's doing it. <laughs> and, then, and it's a different format, especially with the writers that went to Marvel, all those guys that uh, Pete, Pete Mull, you know, with the, the Pete Mulligan, all those sort of guys that went to Marvel at that period with um, Posada, when he was trying to get writers in there. And even that's crazy that Kevin Smith's Daredevil, that was initially um, a plot because Kevin was very much behind. I think they said in one of those Marvel documentaries, no, it was on um, Sci-Fi, where they were saying how when they were doing the Guardian Devil that he was behind. So Kusada said, just tell me the story, just tell me and we'll get started. So I just want to just bring up one part about the death in the family and that, yeah, while it was being full Chris scripted, you also have the fact that they had two, two endings. You had the one ending where he survived and you had the other yeah. ending where he, he died. So, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the, the public overwhelmingly voted for him to pass, okay? You know, it was a what? big, you know, so it was, it was very- No, 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 so, no, 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 no. So, What did you say? We're, 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 we're moving on to something no, else. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 go back. What did you say? The I said- what? The, the the public was was very um, he they, they, they voted because they, they they had a nine hundred number they could call and the, right. the the public voted for him to pass okay it's yeah. documented with the call logs okay? yeah that's better yeah take that other misleading <laughs> you know take that other misleading <laughs> adverb you got out of it <laughs> <laughs> okay you know so gentlemen is there any more else you want more you want to 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 talk about this particular Martha Marvel method it's too much because the last time. You know, I got people after me now for my criticism about the whole thing. So, and don't say the criticism much. again. You know, don't what say the criticism. criticism. I don't know what this is. Well, I said some stuff, you know, regarding Dan Slott, and some some people took issue with it. So, I got to play nice this time. Uh, you gotta. Well, I don't know what you said though. I have to remember know that what movie, it's... Austin Powers. No, I don't oh, remember no. that movie. Well, <laughs> Austin what? Powers Two. They introduced this new character. <laughs> Well, no, there was no. a lot of characters in there. I think you need to be a little more specific no, to help me out. No, you don't need to be more specific at all. I think, thank you very much. He, he was a Scotsman. He had a beard. Oh, my goodness. I think I remember him. I don't. So we don't need to, we don't need what, to explore what, that. Well, that that, I need to, because I want to see that again. What was his name? I might miss it. I can't his say name it. Was, was Joe, say it. Joe Blog. That's his name. Joe Blog. That's what they use in England. Like, uh, John Q. Public. That's uh, Joe Blog. That's what they call him back there. Okay? So listen, guys. So I think we've. Um, I don't Rhymes think this is a that. good look. That. Oh wait, that look. has it. Sat. That has it. Sat. Sat. Look. No, so, let's, we can't. The thing is, we go to the writers of say like Chris Claremont saying his struggles with Cockrum and Byrne and and, and John Romita Jr. and um, Silvestri, that sort of thing. That's the struggle of the Marvel method. But at the same time, Chris Claremont says, you don't want to tie these artists' hands like this so they can't, as storytellers, you're tying their hands saying, all right, you follow this or else, right? Because you have a person like Dave Cockrum, Byrne, you have these guys that are strong storytellers. And yes, you can get it hammered out, but then the stuff you find at the same time, even though Claremont struggled with it, some of the stuff that now is gold to him, because at the time when the X-Men was coming out, he was kind of struggling with Burns' work, saying, and he struggled with Cockrum too, because Cockrum would say no to a lot of things too. Like Cockrum said no to the X-Men being in the circus, and Burns said yes to it. So there was always a back and forth between him and the artists. So, but at the same time, the success of the, that is undeniable. So. Right, but do you know, I mean, I, I'm just gonna add this here, look. You know, uh -oh. The very fact is that this is a collaborative um, thing where you both have the writer and the artist and the, and the, art, and the editor. Those, those three guys sit down in yeah. a room you know, and they, they make the calls. The question is whether you have the full script and then it goes out to the writer, to the artist, and 
none of them are ever shackled to that. But there's a guide. That's what a script is. A guide. It's a guide. Okay. It's more than, whether it's, in comics, it's. I mean, the idea of if you go back to the original thing of a script, the original thing of a right. script is it's directions. Right. These are like directions for actors. This is what's supposed to happen. This is what's supposed to say. But it's pretty much dialogue, okay? And you know, this is where you're supposed to be on stage, and it's supposed to give you a whole bunch of room to do acting. Now, when you get to a comic book, okay, it's still the script portion is still supposed to give a whole bunch of room for the artist, you know, to you know put down the actions as as well. Marvel, the Marvel stuff really uh, is, is a line of demarcation from that standard, where it's like, okay, we're gonna uh, at the very least starting off, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do even less even less direction than uh, we would have with the script. And I'm going to leave it up to the artist to do a lot of this stuff, to do a lot of the heavy lifting. And then I'm going to come back in, you know, with the dialogue and that's how we're going to make it. It's a three-step process. And I, again, I really think this was something that worked very well, Stan and the people he was working with. That was just the once in a lifetime synergy. You still get people who are using it to great effect after Stan. But then you look at something like we saw with the, the whole thing with Dan Slott, and you're like, well, you know, you, you know, you, this dude wouldn't get the stuff done. He didn't have Christmas Page over there <laughs> coming in there doing the script and being half his brain, as as you would say. So, you know, I and I think I've done the Marvel method. I've done the script method. Most of the artists that I work with, they wanted the full script. Okay, they wanted the full script at the end of the day. Because right. the, I'll be honest, if you're somebody who I tried to do that before, I did like a plot breakdown. It was like a two-page plot breakdown. I said, yeah, that should be fine. And when I got the art back, I was like, the hell? <laughs> what, what is this? It was like, you know, it was like, where did all these splash pages come from? And, you know, where's the storytelling? So, again, you've really got, I think if you've worked with somebody for a longer period of time, you know, if you're like, say, like a, uh, you know, a really good team, maybe like Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams, where, okay, we understand, you know, each other, you know, to a better extent, you might be able to pull, you might be able to pull something like that off. To greater to greater effect, but you know, looking at the stuff with Dan Slott, that's almost like look, the Marvel method should be retired along with Dan Slott, who doesn't look like he he really wants to continue doing this. Well, the, so, the only th the only thing I can think of is that uh, the only reason Marvel allowed that because they thought, hey, this would be exciting TV. I don't think necessarily that's the great thing, but you also have the very fact that most of the best books, comic books that have been out, have been written by pretty accomplished writers. You have Alan Moore. You have um, Stan Lee, no, John Byrne, Grant Morrison. Of course, Bendis is on that list of one of the top writers, Gaiman. You know, I mean, you very have someone like John Byrne and um, probably Frank, um, Frank, uh, what's his Frank, name? Miller. Frank, Frank Miller, who can go both ways. But most people are basically the writers. And, and we have to accept that those guys have been able to be successful because they've been able to give the artists that they've worked with. And they've worked with a variety of artists, the visualization or the direction uh, the direction of what they need to put in there, whether it's a, gonna, a, a plasma. Look I'm going to I'm gonna give you a. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to go back to Marv Wolfman, Lin Wen. These are plot guys, right? Yeah. They work with DC. Jerry Conway. These old guys, and then Jerry Conway went to TV. So they're not just slouches doing. They don't want it to be like a, a degenerate, like a, a negative term to say like, hey. These guys are just sort of loafing, and that's the thing. I think um, when um, Byrne compared to, if you ever heard of Archie Goodwin, when he worked with him on Wolverine, he was like, "Like this, this plot has more stuff than our first year in um, in on the X Men." And he's like, he said, "No, it's only six pages, but he knew when to give you the details and when to let you, you know, let you loose." And that's the only thing. It's like in a fight scene. You can sit there and kill yourself saying, unless you really, that's the thing, breaking down, I think in the, like in the X-Men, the scene where Wolverine has a Clint Eastwood scene that was broken down by Chris Claremont to say what he wanted to have the, the those sort of things and some of the, but it's like ultimately all the stuff before it, Wolverine standing on top of the, <laughs> you know, on the ceiling and jumping down and killing and just letting burn play. And in that Clint Eastwood scene at the end where he said, does he have, does he have the three claw, two claws, or three of that sort of thing? How many bullets do I have left? The whole thing is with things. So let's not look at it like, hey, these, like Alan Moore is one thing, 
But even Alan Moore said at some point he was almost, he, and now he says, hey, I didn't have to write all that stuff. You know, but he was, what people liked was writing a letter. He was talking to the artist and saying, hey, buy, put, bring me a drink, sit down, light a candle. <laughs> He'd have all that stuff in, in his full script. It wasn't just, it was all being <laughs> playful with the artist. So it's not to say either method you can have, but a talented, talented writers have used the method. And artists have been like artists, a lot of time artists, they're used to Mignola, um, not Burn, but um, I think um, Keith Giffen, they would break down the stories in drawings. Like they would start and they would draw it out in panels and basically write the script out that way. And then they would, they totally chuck that and went full script. So it's like, you, you, there's so many ways to sort of get the job done and to be detailed, but it's kind of been felt like it's a half-assed thing, especially because of Dan Slott now. And we kind of like looking at it and saying, this is a half-assed way to do it when, I mean, I think I saw, I seen some Mark Wade plots on Deadpool, and these are very involved plots. They're not, um, hey, what's the name goes to the left, they, <laughs> he goes that sort of thing. So it's, it's um, we, we now got it as a negative term. You have Jim Lee saying, who was one of the big storytellers in the 90s saying, now he prefers um, full scripts. And I'm, I'm saying, in the Marvel time, people preferred full scripts. And some of them, like John Buscema, didn't need much of anything. He remembered how to you know, do, outside of probably some production stills, he remembered um, the Wizard of Oz to do the treasury edition. He did it from memory. So, yeah. <clears throat> so. Any final words, um, I, Cal? I think I think what you're saying is really important because you, you're different with uh, dealing with a different class, mm -hmm. a different, I, I think, Era. A, a different class. No, in terms of the artist, because you look at these guys, you're talking about John Romita Sr. And these guys were just different class of artists all together, where you could do something, where you could do something like that. Where, like, yeah, I remember the Wizard of Oz from memory. I don't know how many guys could do that today. I don't know if any of these guys could do that today because, quite honestly, you're not going to be called, you wouldn't necessarily be called upon to do it to, uh, today. Oh, yeah. you know, you're looking at guys over there who are literally, I mean, legends. But I remember even uh, Frank Miller. Frank Miller did The Dark Knight Returns. He did the art and he did the story. And I was really surprised when I found out that he did a full script for The Dark Knight Returns. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, well, why do you even need to do that? You're the artist and you're the writer. What do you need a script for? And he was like, no, I need this to be detailed, you know, so I can, you know, for myself, so I can keep those particular things in motion. So when I, that with somebody like Frank Miller, who was definitely somebody who could do the Marvel method and probably, uh, I'm not 100% certain if he ever did it, but I'm pretty certain he could if it came down to it because he has some clear things going on in his mind, but it was still working from those particular set of directions. But of course he can do, you know, he can, you know, he can, uh, you know, detour from if he will, if you will. But you know the the you know the talent the and what they and what was expected of an artist for these guys to be able to accomplish you know why would anybody need to remember the Wizard of Oz from start to finish today when you can access it so easily now yeah. online and just you know okay let me watch it over here we're back then it's like oh yeah I remember it you know you know no big deal at that point your your memory okay your uh, attention to detail. Okay, your ability to, you know, your ability to be concise, your ability to expand, totally different, a totally different demand in terms of uh, what would have been demanded of an artist. I mean, it's like the same thing. We have, they said people, the memory that people had in the 1800s and the early 1900s, totally different than the memory that people have now because you were expected to be able to remember more. You were expected. You, you know, like, oh, you know, it's going to be on this particular thing and remember these numbers and you expect able to access that information in your brain because that's all you had. Whereas today, somebody gives you some numbers or something, you'd be like, oh, hang on a second. Let me put it in the old uh, phone right over here. <laughs> you know, or let me text it and I'll, I'll save the text. I can save the text forever in the cloud so you don't need to access that particular part of your brain any longer. So again, that particular method, I, I'm pretty sure there's some guys out there who make that method work very, very well. Mm -hmm. But those were not the guys we were shown on that video. <laughs> okay, guys, I think we've uh, we've definitely hit this uh, 
the labor discipline. But we haven't. We haven't. No. I, I think we have. I think to the to to. So we all agree that the full scripted method is the way to go, and that you, you know collaborate, know. and that no. and that collaboration is something that's that 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 does occur. You know. So um. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Spinarak. Did um, you say what I just wait, wait, did you just say what I thought you just said that we had a whole long discussion about that you're not gonna say? I don't know what you're talking about. I think I kind of asked them um some questions. I might have led it on without knowing without knowing what he was exactly saying. I did clear um, my throat it I did clear my throat at one point. <laughs> Usually you go, uh -huh. you don't say mm -mm -mm. that's what you don't do, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, I, so ladies and gentlemen, my apologies for the uh, for the for the implied. He just made a mistake because he was clearing his throat. So, once again, if you like what you see, comment, give us a thumb up. You know, subscribe, spin thumbs around. up, thumbs up, not a thumb up, thumbs up, thumbs, thumb up, thumb All up. right? Yeah, we don't swing that way. Well, at least not me. Thumb up. What the hell is that supposed? Yo, doesn't matter. Spin rack out. Spin rack out.